Heroes are great. And stories are great. But can you tell me a good hero in a good story without a good villain to back him up? Just saying, sometimes villains can really create the mood of a story in a way that a hero can't and give the stakes that much more. A good villain really does a lot for the story. And today, if you can't tell by the Disney picture and my Disney Mickey shirt, we're gonna be talking about my favorite Disney villains of all time. So, do you have a minute to talk about my top five favorite Disney villains? Hello everybody and welcome back to another exciting episode of Matt's Minutes. Today, like I said, we're going to be taking a look at my top five Disney villains of all time. Some things that I took into consideration while I was doing this list are how successful were they, how much personality did they have, and just what was their general likability with their character. So, let's kick this list off. At number five, we have Jafar. Jafar is one of those villains that I feel like oftentimes gets overlooked, but when you sit down and look at it, he actually did exactly what he said he was going to do. He wanted to find the magic lamp, and he found the magic lamp. Did he get the magic lamp? Nope, he did not. But did that stop him? No! He kept, found a new plan and was like, oh, I'm going to marry Jasmine now because that's another way of accomplishing my goal. And then he found the lamp. And then he became an all-powerful sorcerer and actually ruled over Agrabah. And I mean, for the most part, he did everything he set out to do. He got every wish he asked for. Unfortunately, he was tricked by Aladdin at the last second. But I mean, it's a success rate. He actually did everything he wanted to do and was only stopped at the very last possible second. I mean, I guess he was kind of also stopped when Aladdin stopped him from taking the, the genie's bottle the first time. But, you know, uh, he wasn't defeated by that. He just made a new plan. Now, in this, I'm only talking about the animated one, not the live action Jafar. I feel like the live action Jafar didn't have as much foresight and wasn't as good of a villain to me as the animated. Animated Jafar was top notch. He also had, he was a little bland on the personality side to me, but he didn't, that, that he's not bland. He's just more on that side. And I think, feel like his relationship with Iago really helped him along with developing more character and personality. So yeah, I'm gonna go with number five, Jafar. All right, at number four, we have one that I kind of struggled whether or not to put him as a villain, but I guess he's the villain of the movie, and that is Gaston from Beauty and the Beast. Both portrayals are phenomenal, both for their own very different reasons. So we're just going to be looking at the character of Gaston as a whole. Gaston isn't necessarily what I would call a villain. He, What he's doing, he does because he thinks it's right now is he mean and kind of a jerk and you know not the best with women and kind of rude to him yeah but does he have diabolical plans no he doesn't is he misguided yeah yeah he is but did he try to do what he thought was right for both bell and the village yeah yeah he did he thought that getting rid of the beast would be the best option. So that's what he thought what he would do. And I like that. I like that he wasn't a villain with diabolical schemes. He's just a little misguided thinking he's doing what's right. So I got to give a lot of credit. Gaston is just a different take on a Disney villain. You know, he doesn't have diabolical plans. He's trying to do the right thing. It's just he's not exactly the most intelligent or well-informed. I mean... He was kind of confused that books had words and stuff, and, the, you know. Other than that, though, I gotta give it to him. He's got a lot of character and charisma, and he's a really good villain in that he doesn't really seem like a villain for most of the movie. All right, guys, coming in at number three, we have an original Disney villain, and that is Maleficent. Why is she so great? Well, let me give you a little test right quick. 
Besides Aurora, who I had to think of, her name actually, tell me somebody else from Sleeping Beauty. What were their names? The prince doesn't count. I know somebody thought of that. Exactly my point. A lot of people don't remember the names of anybody other than the prince and Aurora and Maleficent. I honestly kind of forget Sleeping Beauty's ever a thing. But you know what I don't forget about? Maleficent. She has... She's amazing as a villain. She really set the tone for a lot of Disney villains that came after her. And her powers are just phenomenal. She's full of character. And she's super, super effective at what she set out to do. Which, for the record, she didn't get invited to a birthday party, so she goes, find your daughter's cursed. I mean... That's kind of petty, but at the same time, that's pretty great and shows how good of a villain she is. And she does it. She really goes out of her way to be really not just a villain, but an antagonist and does a great job throughout the movie. Now, we're also, I'm not really looking at the Anna, Angelina Jolie movies as much. I'm mostly looking at the original incarnation of Maleficent, but... There are so many things that Maleficent is in that I think that really speaks for herself as how great of a villain she is, that she's in all these other things. Um, what was that show? Uh, Once Upon a Time that has two of her own movies. Okay. Um, and she's just an overwhelming, very recognizable presence. If you see Maleficent, you know exactly who it is. So she d definitely deserves a spot on this list. All right, guys, at number two, we have what a lot of people would think would be number one, but I feel like my number one and number two are so close that it took me days to decide which one was actually number one and which one was actually number two. So this is a very tight, 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 tight. Well, it's very close. Let's leave it at that. And for number two, we have Scar from The Lion King, specifically the animated because Mm, his voice is killer. His performance, just top notch. Not that live action isn't that great. He's good, but he's not great. I think the live action, or the animated Scar, is just in a, the epitome of what a villain is supposed to be. And he does it with so much conniving, and he's so smart, and he's so charismatic. And he's got such a memorable song that he does in the movie. I mean, Be Prepared is pretty catchy, and yeah, it has a little bit of some odd imagery in there, but I mean, the song's good nonetheless. But, oh my gosh, yes, Scar's amazing. And unlike most of the villains that are in Disney, Scar accomplishes what he wants to do at the halfway point of the movie, or sooner, if I remember correctly, like, what do you want to do? He wanted to be king. And he got rid of Mufasa and Simba quickly and ruled for a while. Yeah, things went into rubble, but it doesn't matter. He did what he wanted to do. And then he was just living his best life, and that's what he did. When Simba came back, and that, I mean, yeah, that foiled his plans, but he legitimately didn't know. So, if anything, he probably shouldn't have left it up to his henchmen. He probably should have done it himself. Which, come to think of it, he probably could have, because there really wasn't anyone else in the gorge there. Except maybe Zazu, but he wants to eat him anyway. So, Scar is a phenomenal Disney villain, and almost made number one, but didn't. So, let's get into who did. Alright guys, the best of all, by a very slight margin, my favorite Disney villain is Hades. Yes, Hades is phenomenal. He takes a lot of what makes a good villain and just amplifies it to the next degree. Like he's got all these years to plan this thing and there's only one little hiccup and it's a small little child that he should be able to get rid of. And quite honestly, if Hades would have done it himself, this, the outcome of Hercules would have been a very different story. But the fact that, again, running into the same thing that Scar did, he didn't know that he didn't, that Hercules wasn't gone. 
kind of chalked that up to bad henchmen, but whatever. And then when he found out, he put almost everything on hold to throw everything he had at Herc. Now it didn't work until near the very end when he's like, oh, I can use Meg against him. And that worked. And if he didn't make that deal with Hercules, and if it wasn't for his own wording, he would have succeeded. So, but he, that being said, Hades usually is very careful with his words. He's very charming and has more personality than you, than pretty much everyone on, else on this list, except maybe Yzma, but yeah. Also, I love Yzma, and she almost made the list, too. But anyway, he is a phenomenal villain and does a phenomenal job in his movie of just being an antagonist while also being one of the most likable villains in all of Disney. There's just not really much else I can say other than Hades is phenomenal and does a great job of being a villain in his own movie and gives an unforgettable performance. Well guys, what do you think? Did I leave one of your favorite villains off? Would you have put these villains in another order? Please let me know in the comment section down below. If you like this video, please, please, please give it a like. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, thank you guys so much for tuning in and I will see you guys in just a couple of weeks. Thank you guys so much for watching.